Hi guys, welcome to the VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Today I have an EG here and our K20C motor out of the new Civic Type R. We're going to be trying this motor in three chassis. We're going to try it in the EG chassis, 92 to 5 Civic. We're going to try it in the EK chassis, the 96 to 2000 Civic. And we're also going to try it in the 94 to 2000 Integra or the DC2 chassis. Now, in order to prep this for this in, for this uh, try in, let's call it, uh, what I've done is I've removed the frame rail bracket. It's over here normally sticking out kind of hanging out in the opening the other thing I've done is I went ahead and cut off the radiator and the condenser supports on the front of the uh, on the thing this engine is pretty big and it kind of usually interferes to prep the motor I pulled off the throttle body because I don't want to accidentally hit it while we're putting it in the car the other thing I did was I removed the AC pump off of the front so we're gonna lift the motor up in the air and try it in Okay, we've uh, actually got the motor in. We've lowered the body down absolutely as much as we can. At this, at this particular height, it's actually got okay ground clearance. I wouldn't call it great ground clearance, but okay. Uh, we've got a few areas of concern for contact. Uh, obviously, this intake air tube, like I said before, it's sticking way out here. It's getting pretty close. If you go back here, you can look at the uh, VTEC solenoid. It's also really close to the frame rail. I think in order to make this work well, what's going to wind up having to happen is there's going to have to be a notch cut in the frame rail over here. You can see right now it's actually resting on it. We're going to need to put some sort of a notch in there. That way we can scoot the motor over a little bit. Once we do that, we can actually tuck it up a little bit farther, tuck it backwards a little bit further as well. That would help out quite a bit. Right now I'd say the axles will install with no problem. Uh, with a little bit of uh, cutting up front, it's going to be fine here. You're going to have to put a radiator in, though, that tucks up front. It's not going to be able to mount here. The turbo is just going to be in the way. Uh, let's try the hood on the car. Right now, we have the engine set in there so that it would have ground clearance very similar to what a K24 in this particular car would have. Take a look at the hood. It's sitting up about two and a half inches on the sides here. Now we could gain about three quarters of an inch to inch back by removing the hood skeleton. We could probably gain back another inch and a half by taking all these vacuum lines and like I said before this intake air tube and moving it over to the other side. But this is still going to be in the way. This course is the wastegate. Uh, also we'd want to take these vacuum lines and move them as well. Now if we went ahead and raised the car up off the engine to the point where the hood closes, let's check out and see what our ground clearance is going to be. Although you can see here the hood's popped up just a little bit, if we remove the hood skeleton it would lay pretty flat. The problem is when we take the motor this low in the car, the differential is actually hitting on the subframe. Now we could again do some trimming on that to clear that up. Uh, but it's still going to be pretty tight there. It's kind of forcing the engine to come forward. Let's take a look real quick. Looking down here, you can see the contacts it made. Again, we could just cut that out, and that would probably fix that problem. That would allow us to move it back about an inch, which would clear up the contact we're having up here. So we can get this in here and get it underneath the stock hood but it's going to require a little bit of carving on this chassis in order to get it to work like that. So for the purpose of getting a little more clearance in here, we went ahead and made the notch in the subframe to see how it fit. We now have a little bit more room up here in front of the car, uh, more room for some of the hoses and stuff. I measured the ground clearance and right now, the oil pan, the lowest point of the engine in here, 
hangs down about two and a half inches below the bottom edge of the lower control arm. That's better than J series clearance, but not as good as K series clearance. So with this type of location for this engine, we could actually get okay ground clearance. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is come over here and cut into the frame rail. If I came in and cut to the end of the frame rail, I could raise it up a little bit further, but that's not going to help us clear the hood. Uh, in order for it to clear the hood, the engine needs to ride about this low inside the thing. Now, Hasport does make what we call flip mounts, so conceivably I could make a kit that mounts it below the hood, but also left to the option of turning the mounts over and raising it up inside the engine bay as well to get better ground clearance. This is going to require a little bit further thought and uh, experimentation, but uh, let's get on to trying this into the EK. I've rolled the EK in here now, and let me tell you a little bit about what we did to prep this engine bay. Now, the EK uses mounts that actually bolt onto the frame rails, so we just had to unbolt them. We didn't have to cut anything off, although this, although this one is missing part of its mount. We did that because it had a J series in it one time. The other thing we've done is we've bolted in an EG subframe. If you look at the EK subframe, there is really no room for the differential to nestle back in. So it actually kicks the engine quite far forward. We discovered this back in the day when we were doing K-series swaps. So it was kind of a no-brainer to start off like that after looking how it barely cleared the EG subframe. Anyway, we're ready to try it in this car now. We've got the K20 into our EK. Now it's really a similar situation. Right now it's going to make contact back there on the subframe on the left side. If it's uh, got room for the subframe then we have problems with contact with the VTEC solenoid over here on the shock tower. Now I don't want to go ahead and chop up this subframe as well. <laughs> I've only got a few good ones so I don't want to have them all with the big notch cut out of them right there. But suffice it to say that that would be the solution on this particular car too cut that up and then you'd be able to shift the motor back far enough in order to make it clear. As of right now, the headlamps are kind of swept back on this as compared to the, uh, um, the EG. They're actually a little bit beefier. So with the headlamp in, it's actually interfering with some of the vacuum lines over on this side. Um, we took it out in order to uh, uh, make it fit a little bit better. Uh, but like I said, if we notched the subframe back there and shifted the differential back, it would have almost identical clearance to that of the EG uh, in this engine bay. Uh, we know that Honda likes to reuse uh, a lot of their engineering. Uh, our mounts for the EF and the DA are very similar. The mounts for the EG and EK for J series and K series are very similar, as well as uh, our mounts for the 2006 and 2012 Civic Si. So uh, knowing that, uh, Obviously, uh, if we made a kit that would fit the EG, it would also fit the EK as well. And I assume if we made a kit for the DC2, it would fit the EG and the EK also. So that's our next chassis we're going to try it into. So let's roll that one in here. Okay, we got our last chassis for today. This is a DC2 or Integra, uh, 94 to 2000. Uh, for engine bay prep, the first thing I did was I actually chopped this uh, frame rail bracket off. This car is relatively complete. It's got the subframe brace in it, which usually needs to be taken out if you're doing a K-series swap. I haven't put a notch in this frame rail. I don't think I'm going to do it. You know, I take that back. I am going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and notch this. This is my personal car. I'm going to make it into a show car at some point down the road. I probably have another one of these subframes somewhere, but it doesn't bother me to go ahead and whack that. Uh, we haven't removed the radiator supports. And the reason I haven't done that is the front end on this particular car is a little bit longer than the one that's on uh, the, in the EG subframe or the EK subframe. So I don't think I need to remove those in order to get it in. Um, I think last, I think I'll pull the power steering line as well just to make it a little more room. We've got the motor tucked in there and we decided to flop a hood on it. Uh, the motor set right now what I think would be the ideal ground clearance for this particular swap. Uh, right now it sits about an inch and a half below the uh, uh, lowest point of the subframe. Uh, 
it would be nice if we could get up a little bit higher, but you can see right now the hood is gapped probably about an inch and a half. So we're not gonna be able to get the uh, engine any higher. Most likely we're gonna have to have it a little lower. Now we could gain probably another inch of clearance between this and the hood by cutting out some of the th subframe. Another option may be to move some of these parts right here, uh, you know, get find different locations for them. That might gain us the other half inch we need in order to have this kind of ground clearance. But that's probably about as good as it's gonna get without cutting a hole in the hood on this car. Um, I think of all the three cars that it fits to this one the best, it seems to have the most room. Probably gonna have uh, uh, the easiest install. Um, and that brings us to some other points about the swap. Uh, first off, I'd like to address the axles. Now the axles on these are pretty big. The inner joints on them are the same size you find on a lot of the V6 engines. So it wouldn't be very hard for us to make a set of axles that also used either the 36 or 32 millimeter outer joints. So I don't think axles are gonna be a pro big problem. Next is the electronics. As of right now, nobody has found a hack for this particular computer. It's a Bosch ECU. Nobody's been able to do anything with it in order to make it work, um, you know, in order to make it tunable. That means if you install that ECU with a swap, it's gonna be looking for a lot of other sensors that just flat aren't in the car, including the multiplex unit, which communicates with the rest of the car. Also, um, probably ABS and S SRS and uh, yaw sensor and steering input and, and things that uh, just are not gonna be present on the older cars. Uh, now, there is a solution. Uh, there's a standalone ECU, it's made by GEMS, G-E-M-S. Uh, it's called the uh, GDI-80. Uh, it's used in a lot of racing applications with this motor. Uh, it's about $3,000, so it's not a cheap solution, but it's a solution. I understand that uh, there are a couple companies, a Honda, a K-Tuner, that are working madly to try to figure out this computer. Uh, now, uh, you understand, of course, the new uh, Accord motor is going to be coming out pretty soon. It's very similar to this motor. It's going to use the same mount kit to be installed, and that one is going to have a lot better tunability. It's going to come with the K-Hen ECU, so it's going to be tunable almost right from the get-go. Um, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that uh, and uh, see how it works out so we can start doing some engine swaps. Well, now that we've tried the EG, EK, and DC2, it's time to try some other chassis. Uh, I happen to have here a 2016 Civic, 2012 Civic, a DA, an EF, an Insight, and a CRZ. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. We'll pull up a couple more of those cars.